air filter housing and condition. So when we get into the air filter in here, uh, why don't somebody out of your KX or any one of those just hand me your air filter and cage. That way I'll let these guys take their own out. What I want to make a point of is these air filters, the way they're in these dirt bikes, and we're going to take a look at the last guy that worked on this Kawasaki. Oh, not so hot, not so hot. What I like to see is a whole bunch of grease around here. Okay, by putting that grease lip around there, it gives a really good seal on the air box. The other thing that I want you to notice about this air filter is the element itself is removable and serviceable. Okay. Yeah, that bolt's just kind of stuck in there, and that's good. That's a good thing that the bolt's tight in there because it's going to create a nice seal. So we would clean this, and uh, they really tell us not to use gas. And all of us do because it's so fast and easy. You take and put gas in this and wring it out, it'll clean this thing spotless clean in mere seconds. The problem with using gas, though, is it will unseparate the glue. Okay, so it's not ideal. You want to use an actual, you go to a bike shop, they're going to have foam filter cleaner. So when I said everybody's doing it, that doesn't mean that you should. Okay, you want to use actual foam filter cleaner to be, uh, to be good about that. So you can kind of see where that's separating. Okay, then uh, what we do is we would re-oil this. You guys are going to learn all about this. And then we would wring it out, and that's how we'd clean it. The thing I want you to be aware of is on, this is called the cage, or the air filter cage on a two-stroke. It's pretty important because what happens is it takes this loose element and as we clamp it around here and hold the back up and clamp the edge here, it gives it strength, right? Because yeah. we don't want this to suck in. We'd lose our, our sealing capability. The other thing about all your cages, if you notice this, you're going to have this lip here that engages. You see the two tabs here? So you guys could see a couple things here. Do you see these two ears? Yeah. So those two ears go on the filter. Okay, I'll just set this back in here. And that helps secure it around. This helps secure it around. And then this, once we, once we tighten the screw down with this in the right position, the other thing you'll notice is typically this, and most of these two-stroke dirt bikes have this, this ear that kind of comes up. This one here looks pretty uh, uniform in shape. Uh, it will only, you will only be able to tighten this down one way. You can get a false sense of security if this isn't engaged it'll feel like it's bottomed out, but the problem is none of this is even touching. So you really have to get in here and look at what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's, that's some of the stuff I'm looking for on your air filter side here. Um, what is the air filter condition? So on this one here, this KX, for example, what, what would you say the condition of that is? Dirty. Really bad. This is hardly dirty at all. It seems good condition. Okay. So it wasn't oiled, right? That's a problem. Yeah, that, that, that's those seams are coming. Condition. What? Those seams are starting to come apart. That's the thing that's bothering me. The reason that filter is so terrible is that the glue is separating from not having treated it right and whatnot. Okay. Um, we do want to see an equal oil film all the way across. But typically, by the time you're working on something, that air filter is probably going to be in bad shape. Why do you think it's important to note on the work order the condition of the air filter? So you know, if you need to order one. Uh, well, that's true. So in your notes, so, and right away, I'd just write air filter, right? Yeah, if yeah. it's tore, damaged, uh, no oil on it, that means that I know dirt has entered this engine. Right. Okay? Um, when, we, when dirt enters a two-stroke engine, here's what we got to think about. First off, let's just do a little review. When a dirt enters a four-stroke engine, where is the dirt possibly going to go? Valve train and combustion chamber. The cylinder wall and piston can get damaged, but usually by the time it gets damaged, the engine quits running and it never gets to the crank or transmission, okay? On a two-stroke, now we're putting it into the crank first. So if you have a dirty air filter, I want you to think about something here. You have the crank, connecting rod, bottom bearing, top bearing, crank bearing, cylinder, piston, rings, and cylinder head all get uh, access to that dirt. Power valves, anything. A little bigger deal? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, a lot of stuff, right? All right. Um, what would happen if the air filter is not sealing uh, at the ring, so that's this, or at the clamp? You know, sometimes uh, we can think of the, the clamp as the band clamp here. So if I'm not sealing here or here, what will happen? Dirt, dirt and dust can bypass. Dirt and dust can uh, get into the engine. Okay, uh, perfect. <coughs> Inspect the intake track of the carburetor. So once, so we're removing the air filter and housing. 
inspect the intake track to the carburetors. So what I mean by check the intake track to the carburetors, I'm simply going to go in here. I'm wiping my fingers inside inside of here. I'm just sticking my fingers in there and now is that dirty? Yeah. So people probably serviced the air filter, but they didn't service this part. You guys get where we're going so far with this? Yep. Yep. This is so much more than just rip a motor out, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, what are the condition of the fuel line clamps? So we take a look at when we took the tank off here, we want to know uh, how the fuel lines are. Is it common that they're often missing? Yeah. Yeah, for you guys it is. People don't put them on. This one seemed like it was a tab <clears throat> loose when I took it off. And then these are uh, one-time use and they're they're yeah. terrible. We just keep leaving them on there so we can model it each mm -hmm. year. Uh, they're not my favorite plant. Um, uh, what caution must... So here's the point we're at. What caution must be used when removing the slide? So the top of most of these carburetors, the RM85 here is the easy one to get to. If you can hold the cable here. When I pull this out, okay, there's a couple things that you might not know about, about these slides. I don't care if it's flat or if it's round. We'll get into that in March. But the caution that must be used is not to bend or damage the needle. That's what I'm looking for on the lab sheet. So when, when I take this off, I don't need to do anything else with it. Some people will take and do this and they'll think, okay, I'm being really good with it. But once I take this motorcycle and I move it, what happens? It's going to flop down. It very well could. And if this bangs around, that soft brass and bends that, it's going to ruin it. Okay. If this chrome gets a chip out of it, it's going to ruin it. Okay. This is not something we want to mess with. So we do want to actually zip tie or secure that. Now here, let me give you a perfect example when people move your stuff. I just moved this dirt bike. And when I moved the dirt bike back, look what fell on the floor. Wire harness. Okay. Now, I could have, when, when I moved the bike, it actually landed like this. Okay. Typically in a walking path, as crowded as we are, whatnot, if I step on that plastic connector, what's going to happen? It's going to break it. Exactly. I kicked this out of the way on purpose, knowing I was going to come right back to it. But what do I really want to see done with this? Tuck it up somewhere. Yeah. I know if, if you're do, if you're at a stopping point to where uh, you need to take a break or do something else, we still need to secure this stuff so it's not on the floor and it's going to get stepped on or, or uh, have a problem that way. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's clear this is what we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, on, on these different slides... This one here has a little plastic ring that's sticking in here. That locks it in place. So I'm just going to wiggle that down, okay? And then what I like to do for this, because we're not in fuel system, so I'm not worried about it, okay? Is then I could take this here and wiggle it out, and now it's off. Okay, but what I don't want to do is shoot that across the room. So do you think this would be good in a baggie? Yep. Yeah. Let me ask you. Is this need to be really thoughtful how you store it? Yes. If I put stuff on top of this, I'm doing the exact same thing. Yep. Make sense? I also notice the clip here, or not clip, I'm sorry, the spacer, if you will, has that little ring in the middle. It's the same on either side on this one. So basically that centers the spring on there to allow it to uh, um, basically cradle around that plastic spacer. So that's for you. We'll get more into that in fuel systems in the future. Um, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to have that up now the way. So back to the actual carburetor removal here. These clamps here are often way over tightened. I mean, just way over tightened. Okay? Okay, so what I want is I want these super, super, super loose. Not with a slight drag or anything else. You guys get that? Yep. Super loose on there. Now, a couple different ways. Some people will take and just try and pry this off and see if they have clearance on there. And this one here feels to be pretty tight. <coughs> and I'm, I'm definitely loose on my clamp, but I'm gonna even go a little bit looser yet. And what I'm trying to do though is not take it off. Sometimes they have a little nut on the back side, and that's gonna fall, you're gonna lose, you got problems. So I just want it, I want it super, super loose. So if this is choosing to not come because it's hard plastic, what I'm going to do is use that radiator tool, and I told you I was very specific on the snap-on one that we use, that SGA 173B, because it's just a really nice beneficial tool for us. I, what I don't want to do is slip and poke a hole in the rubber. 
right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just kind of try and walk that around. you see how that just manipulated that? Yep. Okay, now where this is really handy too is for installation. I'd put a bunch of lube on here, put some WD-40 or something <laughs> with the boot off, okay? Slip the tool in so it's kind of resting on it. And then what you could do is basically walk it around the carburetor like that to, to get it back in place. So this is a removal and installation aid tool. Got to use a lot of caution, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to have that problem. So now I'm at a point where I've loosened that front clamp already. Now here's where I want you to pay attention. Guys, focus in here. People start ripping this stuff off. Do you see how the hoses are all around that clamp? Yeah. I love that. What that's doing is it's keeping it out of the chain and it's also keeping it out of the shock. Okay? The routing of your drain lines are going to be super important. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and just pull these through right now. What I want you to see here is that on a dirt bike, we've got multiple vents. We've talked a little about in our small engine class how fuel systems have to have an atmospheric vent. Remember talking about that? Yeah. Okay, so that fuel could flow. Well, dirt bikes, when a guy goes to jump or a gal goes to jump 20 feet in the air, the fuel will actually raise up in the carburetor be with the bike and block the vent. So that's why they have multiple vents so that if one gets blocked, there's another one that's available. Because you don't want to be in the air on a 20-foot jump, you know, and, and all of a sudden you don't have any fuel. Because if you don't have any fuel, the bike is going to die. And they really used the throttle to control where that bike is in the air. If, the, if they're really high in the front end, when they go off a jump, they're going to let the throttle off to let it dive down a little. Or if they're really low, they come off a jump and they're going to face plant or whatnot, they will gun that thing and the acceleration of that rear wheel will pull the bike back down. Okay. So venting is pretty important. So when we work on our customer bikes, <laughs> am I pretty correct on that? <clears throat> we got a couple of motocrossers back here that are agreeing that that's pretty uh, true there. So, all right. Um, carburetor off. If I was going home for the night uh, or I was only cleaning the carb, what would I need to do here? Right. Stick a paper towel or something in there. Now that this is off too, this is another opportunity. Pretty dirty. So that air box was not cleaned. Some of you may find it's easier to go ahead and remove your air box. And then on the, let's see, I think it's the Kawasaki. I'll show you guys a neat motocross trick. Take a look and kind of focus right here. This is that attention to detail. Do, maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Does it seem like that clamp's <coughs> weird or goofy? Yeah, it's in the wrong position. Mm. Yeah, right? Okay. A bit. And clamps are typically straight up and down or straight underneath or they're, they're, they're supposed to be somewhere where they could be accessed. Where I think this clamp was put on wrong is it should have been flipped and it should have been underneath. Now let me ask you, would it even be that easy to necessarily get your screwdriver on that? Nope. No. So what are you probably going to do with the screw? Screw Strip it. Strip it, right? Okay, you may know what this guy is right here, this electrical sensor on this carburetor. It's a throttle position sensor on a carburetor, and a dirt bike carburetor. It's pretty advanced for Kawasaki doing this back in 2004. But what I'm going to do here is I need a, I need a Phillips screwdriver, and I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick if you have a dirt bike with a removable subframe. Chris, will you take off this bottom bolt on your side? I was able to get mine out, and then I need to... Okay, this is called the subframe. It's a removable part on this bike. It's not removable on all of them. Phillips screwdriver, that What's that? Pull the airbox out the subframe. Yep. you like this. This sucks. <laughs> Michael's on the right track. We'll see if you've ever seen this before. If you ever walked in a bike shop, I, I remember the first time I learned this, I was just thinking, you got the pull out. I'm not just the bottom one. Okay. Now, it looked to me like that bolt might even be almost stripped. Yeah, okay. not looking too hot. Whose bike is this? Mine is Will you guys put right bottom subframe bolt on your work order? Yeah. Good. Is it broken in? It's starting to round off pretty bad. And it was way, I think it was way too tight. All right, so I've got the carburetor clamp loose on this bike. Check this out. Then what you do, give me that Allen. I didn't take the top bolts out. I just I just snug one bolt back up. And then that'll just stay there. 
Pretty cool. Some of these bikes don't have a removable subframe, so you don't get that option. Kawasaki made this really serviceable. The other thing that we really like about these removable subframes is in the event of a real heavy crash, you can buy just this piece. And th this is the part that gets bent, the subframe of a motorcycle. We, these bend really easy on sport bikes when the guys crash them and so on. So um, frame, main support here, and a subframe. Okay. So I kind of like this, kind of a cool trick. Now that clamp went flying. Right here. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, model how I think this actually, I wished it would have went. And the other thing that I'm going to look at is this clamp's just been violated. Get closer here, guys. See it here. You see how it's like bent here, it's got screwdriver marks here, and it's not in a good circle here or whatnot. It's, oh, yeah. it's pretty common. Like, I mean, I would just replace this for a customer's bike so that you don't have to. Now you could try and bend this back and straighten things out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on this boot, and a lot of times the clamps are actually only meant to go one way, and they'll have a securing tab. This does not. This this clamp can go anywhere it wants to on here. Okay. But let's let's just put this back down here. that I'm somewhat in place here, I would take that, uh, give me that radiator tool. I would try to get the clamp behind this. Now watch, this is a perfect example of this. So I take this here and I basically walk this into place here. <coughs> Do you hear a pop? Yep. Yeah. I manipulated that on. Do you actually see how this air box even has an ear for pulling? Yeah. yeah. It has that on there? Okay. So then uh, we'll get back on here. I'd like to possibly see this even loosen up a little bit more. Get that in place. Now take a look at this here and see if you think. Does that just look more stock? Yep. Do you think it's your guys' job, maybe right now, early in your career, to just take it, take your Saturday, go into a motorcycle dealer, and do this? Hmm, how does Kawasaki put that on brand new? How does Suzuki do that? You know, go take a look at brand new bikes if you want to see how stuff is, is typically done from the factory, because that clamp location hasn't exactly changed in 40 years. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just a good idea. Now, just just looking at that, that just looks so much cleaner to me. You know, would your customer notice it? Probably not. But... Probably not if he's a weekend warrior guy, screw not. If he's him, he's going to notice it. He's going to think, man, dude, that's crappy craftsmanship. I don't like it, blah, 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 so on. We good? Okay. Um, this bike here has electrical connectors. Might be a, a good time to look at some of these. So let's see, where's our, here's our throttle position sensor right here so we can get this carb off here. And there's a release tab, listen, listen to this. Okay, when I, when I lift this tab and that's off, now listen. Oh, it's, I think it might be dirty, it's not fully what I'm expecting. Watch, watch this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just push this on. Okay, I should hear an audible click. It's not clicking, watch what happens. Yeah, click. I, I heard a click. Heard. No it didn't. Okay, so something's dirty or this actually needs cleaned because when this is when this is on properly and fully seated, this will actually click on the connector and it's not doing so. So something's in there. I think that's preventing that from happening. We'll come back to that. Well, let's uh, maybe I'll just try this one here. You hear that? Yeah. That's what I was hoping to have happen.